Hey everybody, it's time to play some more Metroid. Last time we left off right after picking up the Ice Beam the proper way. And unfortunately the dragons here are none too impressed by our actions, and fully intend to keep killing us until the end of time. Unfortunately for them, their aim sucks, and they're very easy to escape. So, now we've got the Ice Beam, with the power to freeze anything, Let's go try it out. In fact, I've got the perfect hallway in mind for just that. It is, in fact, the hallway that I kept skipping. And I kept skipping it for a pretty good reason. This place is filled with enemies, and if you don't have a good supply of missiles to take out these flying guys, and the ice beam to freeze the gamuts, then you're probably gonna get killed. This is not an easy place to get through if you aren't properly equipped. That said, you don't really need to be equipped at all to get by. All you really need is the bombs. And you'll see why in just a second. Well, maybe more than a second. There we go. So this is why you need the bombs to get through here. Our reward for completing the hallway is on the other side. It's ten missiles. But there's another obstacle just past this that might make you think that you need the ice beam and or the high jump boots. That's a pretty high ledge. The high jump on its own won't get you there. So you either need to bomb jump up with the high jump boots, freeze an enemy, and bomb jump up without the high jump boots, or you can just use the bombs and some trickiness and get up there without any of it. Alright, now that we've got our 10 missiles, it's on to our next power suit upgrade, which also happens to be the best item in the entire Metroid franchise. What is it, you ask? I'll give you a hint. It's the screw attack. But to find it, we're going to need to use some trickery. The screw attack is... I won't say it's notoriously well hidden, but I'll tell you this, I never found it as a kid, and nobody I know who played Metroid ever found it as a kid either. At least not until Nintendo Power told them where it was. The key to finding the screw attack is going to be our knowledge of how the game was designed and programmed. It's a little hard to notice when you're playing, but when you're actually just watching videos of the game being played, it's a lot easier to notice that every time you walk through a door, the game changes to a different scrolling type. So right now, this hall we were in scrolls horizontally. But after going through the door, we wind up in a shaft that scrolls vertically. Now this changes every time you go through a door, with one exception and that's when you go into item chambers. To get to where the screw attack is hidden, first we have to go through the area where we picked up the high jump boots. Notice, horizontal area. Now this is still a horizontal area. And behind it is the same exact room that we had to bypass to get to the 10 missiles up above. So you might wonder, okay, so if the game switches from horizontal to vertical every other time you go through a door, why make it different for item rooms? Well, the reason is probably so that they can do stuff like this and hide things behind them. Now this, that room we just bypassed, is one way that the game likes to trick you just in case you think you've figured it out. That room is a vertical scrolling room, but there's nothing in it, so there's no real way to tell that the room would scroll vertically if you could scroll it at all. But of course, since that was vertical, and we just passed through horizontal, that means this is vertical as well. So, when you wind up in a room like this that looks like it would only scroll horizontally, but you know it needs to scroll vertically because of the way the game is put together, that is your cue to bomb and shoot everywhere. 
Any reward is another item chamber. Ah, come to Mama. What we just picked up is quite possibly the most devastating weapon in Samus's entire arsenal throughout the entirety of the franchise. There's really, well, maybe two things I can think of that you could possibly argue for being more devastating. One is the power bombs, which wipe out everything on the screen, and the other is the speed booster, which when you're using the Shine Spark ability that it grants you, lets you pretty much kill everything in your path. While I claim that the screw attack is in fact the best item in the Metroid franchise, I would put those two as the next best. You might notice that I have a bit of a thing for extremely devastating weapons. Let's demonstrate. When you're using the screw attack and you do a somersault jump, which is achieved by holding down right or left as you're jumping, and s like literally as you're jumping, as if you're walking and just press the button to jump. Then you are covered by this energy that just destroys everything that it touches. Well, nearly everything that it touches. Some enemies are immune to it. However, bosses are not, so you can damage them just by, you know, screw attacking into them, which is different from the rest of the Metroid games. So, now that we've learned our little trick, that helps us to find things. What can we find with it? The answer is basically everything. The screw attack isn't the only major upgrade in the game that was hidden using the sneaky vertical shaft trick. The first ice beam in the game which we bypassed was as well. And in this room, which looks like a dead end, we find that it is in fact not a dead end. And we descend down to an area that might seem familiar to you if you've read a particular Captain N comic. In the comic in question, they meet Samus on Zeebies, and she rushes headlong into this room and gets attacked by these monsters, the Gamets. Of course, since Captain N is the hero, he blasts them, and goes through this passageway and across these pillars to find an energy tank, which he quickly retrieves, gives to Samus, and saves her life. I think that's good enough for today. Next time, Wave Beam!